the show, Five Sharp Fam. I'm AJ, and this is Mark. Before we get into it, become a member of the Notification Squad by hitting the bell next to the subscribe button on YouTube. This segment is sponsored by Thinking Man Tavern, a cozy Decatur neighborhood pub. Grab a tasty beverage from a wide variety of selections and a plate of something delicious from the menu. To go, check out Thinking Man Tavern. Welcome to another Five Stripe Weekly episode, and yes, this season draws nearer. We're not quite there yet, but we are uh, a couple of more uh, preseason games down, uh, and at least in this week, we will talk about Celaya FC. They were in Guadalajara, Mexico, and uh, yeah, definitely... A little bit tougher competition this go around, but uh, yeah, you saw Jose Martinez get a start, Ronald Hernandez as well, and uh, yeah, you know, unfortunately missing from the squad are Marcelino Moreno and Santiago Sosa uh, and Brooks Lennon as well. But uh, yeah, you saw uh, yeah Osvaldo Alonso in the middle there along with Franco Ibarra, and yeah, it was not exactly uh, a really fantastic showing for the boys, I would say, but uh, yeah, it is exercise uh, for that first uh, 60 minutes for that uh, first team, but uh, I think at the end, um, you know, when you get, uh, I think, uh, you know, the, the two goals from Atlanta United and that second one being from Jake Mulraney playing in a central playmaker role. Uh, he was able to skip past a couple of dudes and put it in the bottom left corner with his favored left foot. It, uh, yeah, ended well as well as uh, any kind of uh, preseason friendly can be. Uh, but, yeah, definitely... Uh, a bit of good exercise, but uh, yeah, Mark, did you have any thoughts about this uh, this preseason friendly? Yeah, I mean, you know, of course, uh, we're seasoned football fans, so we don't get uh, too caught up in preseason results. Uh, but as we talked about before, you know, seeing the ball go in the back of the net is good for your confidence at any time. And uh, it's exciting to see that for Mulraney, as you mentioned, uh, playing in a central playmaker role. And he's an interesting player because, I mean, like, he has a bit of skill, right? We've seen that those flashes from time to time. Um, there was one uh, game that you and I were at in particular where he uh, kind of had a mazy run through the middle. Um, yeah, and so it's... Uh, and it, and there was a one goal where he created the uh, the game winner versus I forget who. So I mean he has his moments, um, but I think you know he gets moved around. He's even played wing back. Uh, we and we immediately knew that wasn't going to be a fit for him. But uh, it'll be interesting to see, uh, yeah, if he, he can uh, find a role for himself in this team where he can thrive. Because I think you know it, it, we need we need players to step up into at least role player positions, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we can't depend on the same eleven to. 13 players week in week out and so i think Moreni would be a good candidate to see um yeah what he can contribute to the scene right and it's that too uh so Moreni just got back into the squad and uh yeah you know scores in his return uh and also does not occupy an international slot anymore so yeah all very good positives uh, for a guy that, as a squad member, you know, doesn't complain. He, uh, anytime he's uh, put in, he'll try to contribute. And so, uh, yeah, definitely a good guy that uh, you can bring off the bench to, uh, you know, offer a number of different types of things um, and goal scoring to boot as well in this regard. But, uh, yeah, you also saw Alex DeJohn play the full 90 in lieu of uh, you know some of other center backs being able to play a part, uh, the one being Alan Franco as well. And so definitely Alex John was asked to, uh, yeah, really uh, step up there, and uh, yeah, he actually had a really really good match. Uh, definitely uh, intercepting a lot and blocking a lot of uh, you know kind of at crucial times. So yeah. 
like all in all, um, you know, I think that second group actually created more chances than the first one. Um, and probably because, yeah, you know, the second group may be fresher uh, and, you know, playing against a little bit more of a fatigue side. But, uh, yeah, I think at the end of the day, you know, it's a... Uh, it's a good little step up in competition, and uh, of course, we will uh, be playing even tougher competition in the next week in Chivas. So uh, that will be something good to see as well to uh, to ramp up properly. But uh, moving on from that, so uh, Piedmont Park will be the venue, or the uh, if you can call a you know the biggest park in uh, Atlanta a venue, but. Uh, yeah, it will be the location for the secondary kit reveal, of course, for the minty fresh uh, secondary kit that we will be getting. Of course, it was alluded to with the uh, uh, the hoodies and whatnot as well. Uh, season ticket holders were able to receive an email about it, and that uh, yeah, it will be a festival style event, and it will take place in the promenade in Piedmont Park. It'll feature some music, entertainment, food, and beverages, as well as some special guest appearances. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely, I think, uh, good in this pandemic era. Uh, last year, of course, it was at the Home Depot backyard, uh, kind of drive-in style. I think this time it's going to be a little bit more, well, hopefully. I mean, uh, I think it's February 19th. It's still going to be freezing, but... Uh, hopefully, yeah. <laughs> you know, it'll just be where, yeah, it's more open air, so it's, like, pretty smart in that regard, but, uh, yeah, what, what do you think about the news February 19th at Piedmont Park? Um, I like it, you know, I think, uh, Piedmont Park is, is, it's cool, it's a nice central location, um, you know, the promenade area, a nice open area. Uh, I think all of that will be, you know, I think a good setting for this type of event. I do wonder about parking, but, you know. <laughs> it's pretty much everyone's uh, going to have to either Uber and Lyft or uh, be savvy enough to know where to park in the area, which... Uh... The street parking, right, yeah, which, I mean, I mean, I've done it for, uh, you know, events and work-related stuff, but uh, yeah, yeah. So that's why I bring that up. But I mean, that's cool though. Yeah, I think that Piedmont Mark kind of, in a lot of ways actually kind of makes sense. Yeah, definitely. And so, uh, yeah, I'm excited for that as, uh, yeah, it'll be pretty much a lot of vantage points that will be kind of cool to uh, be able to check out the event from. But uh, yeah, moving on from that, other news, Eric Lopez, he uh, his reported loan move to Bonfield is off. And Atlanta United, uh, they uh, are pretty much saying that, uh, yeah, he will be returning to the Atlanta camp and uh, the club will assess and evaluate him to determine his reintegration into the team. It's a little bit awkward for sure here. Uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, this player that I think he maybe didn't want to sign uh, and uh, then you have the kind of repercussion of that where, yeah, maybe we have to maybe cancel his contract or, you know, I don't know. Whichever it is, um, he's realizing maybe he's got a little bit more power in this, uh, you know, kind of transaction than maybe uh, he maybe realized at first. And so it could be why. But uh, what do you think about all this? Is it... Uh, yeah, like what? What, is, what? What should the team do? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know because, I mean, it's too late to try to find him a different move at this point. But then it's also this: like for me, even when he was leaving, I thought it was a weird move. You know, because it's like, okay, we don't necessarily have a whole lot of depth at striker. And we paid $5 million reportedly for this guy. Like, we need to know how good he is. Like, we need to, you know, we need to, I think uh, the team needs to do their best to try to get the best out, out of him. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think, so to me, it kind of makes sense to keep him 
as a part of the squad and then, you know, have him be a sort of, I guess, start off in a role player sort of role and, uh, you know, see if he can like sort of integrate himself into the team. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause it's this like Elaine that isn't necessarily filled out in, in terms of the attacking rules. Mm-hmm. You know, like I know that he's not great on the left. I know that he's not naturally a winger, right. but uh, you know, like that, I think he, if he's as good as uh, he's supposed to be, I think there's got to be a way to figure out how he can be an asset to the team. Yeah. And it's a little bit of that because, yeah, I, you know, the reports are, are that he's uh, best suited as a second striker. But, uh, you know, the, the player coming in, uh, and we'll talk about him in a second, kind of pretty much plays that 10 role uh, slash, you know, probably uh, could be a second striker as well. And so, yeah, he's got to maybe learn some of those, uh, you know, uh, kind of striker uh, kind of aspects that he will maybe have to play uh, kind of as a possible understudy to Joseph Martinez. But uh, I think at, at this point, I think, um, yeah, it's going to be very tough, I think, to integrate him into the team to see uh, where the actual fit is if uh, they were planning without him. So it's definitely, uh, you know, maybe a bit too awkward here. But uh, we shall see how he uh, is reintegrated back into the team. But moving on from that, that a player we were alluding to was Tiago Almeida. And uh, according to Hernan Castillo, or Hernan, uh, he was dismissed from the case that involved him. And uh, yeah, this week pretty much uh, he will have traveled to the U.S. Uh, and joined the team in preseason with, in Mexico. Uh, and possible uh, two friendlies he will be able to play uh, and then back to Atlanta. So, uh, you know, it will be, I think, very interesting uh, how match fit Thiago Almeida is. But, uh, yeah, you know, reactions to Almeida, uh, you know, that bit of news. Uh, well, it was a key bit of news. Um, it's something that we've been calling out for, at least in terms of a resolution of you know the case and the situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, that this you know this player that you uh, haven't officially signed, but basically have signed. Yeah. Um, and so it's you know it's uh, Atlanta has obviously a history of these uh, complicated uh, transfers for one reason or another. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know I, I think that it's probably not too late for him to get in shape um you know get some minutes under his belt perhaps uh there is some uh, slowly integrating him i'm curious to see how this goes actually and this is the thing too because because of the controversies uh that he has come with unfortunately uh we haven't really talked about what fit he'll be in the team mm-hmm. and what i find interesting is that uh, he's coming with similar fanfare to Barco, who just left. So, yep. you know, it's like it's like we're doing this again. You know what I mean? Hope it goes better this time. Hope uh-huh. we've learned some lesson. You know, but it's we'll see. We we'll just have to see. Yeah, and it's that too. It's uh, I think he comes with a little bit uh, more of a pedigree than Barco to a degree where he's got uh, a little bit more. I think stats wise. Uh, then Barco, um, obviously Barco came as a teenager and, you know, uh, Almeida comes a little bit more polished. Um, and so in that sense, yeah, it'll be very interesting to see, um, you know, if, uh, it's going to be on the left, it's, if it's going to be as the number 10 and where Marcelino Moreno also plays, uh, because yeah, you know, in that sense, they may occupy some of the same spots. And, uh, yeah, we'll definitely see how that comes about. Uh, but moving on from that, Jurgen Dom, yeah, uh, this, this old chestnut, uh, basically, uh, he took to Twitter to respond to Gonzalo Pineda's, uh, comments to the press that Jurgen Dom will pretty much, uh, we're going a different direction and he won't be part of the squad. But uh, Jurgen Dom uh, tweeted in his native Spanish, saying, uh, translated, 
I sincerely appreciate all the support and affection provided in these years, but a restructuring of my salary is not negotiable. My contract is guaranteed and valid. If this decision uh, of mine leads to not entering into plans, I respect the decision and will continue working with the same dedication. And uh, he also uh, tweeted uh, in another tweet, and regarding the notes that are circulating in different media about my future, I want to clarify that so far there is nothing. I continue training every day with LA United 2, and I'm very grateful to each of the clubs that have shown interest in me. Uh, Chivas being one of the teams, apparently, but uh, yeah, he, I guess, has rebuffed that. But uh, yeah, messy situation. Uh, you know, we're paying. Uh, Jurgen Dom upwards of a million dollars uh, a year for his salary. Kind of a little bit of an albatross on our salary cap. But uh, what do you think is the best resolution here for Jurgen Dom? For us. I think I like. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Lane and I has just got to buy him out. I mean, if you're not going <sighs> to. That's the thing. Like, if. If he doesn't want, if he's not going to agree with another team, uh, in terms of, and specifically, it's this, it's this. Like, he would have to cancel his contract in order to agree with another one with a different team. And he has no incentive to do that, right. you know? And, like, in, now normally, like, a player, when they're on making a certain wage, are usually not, uh, being overpaid, right? And so another team would have no problem paying those wages. But again, another team is not going to pay Jurgen Dom those wages. And so um, I think Atlanta United just has to realize uh, the situation here because I don't think keeping him around is a good idea. Like even the nicest guy, and I have nothing against Jurgen Dom, but even the nicest guy can make for an awkward situation if they don't want to be there. Right. Yeah. You know? Or. Or, or and it, it seems like the team is uh, doing the whole freeze out thing, right? So he's training with uh, maybe the youths or the twos or whatever. And like, that's just, that's awkward. I don't think that's a great look on the club either. Just pay him out, man. Just let him be a free agent and just, you know, just be done with him. There's no point in keeping him around, in my opinion. Yeah. And it's pretty clear, I think, uh, you know, he, he, Really, I, he'll see out a contract if uh, he needs to. This is shades of uh, Mesut Ozil, this is shades of uh, other big name players who uh, you know get paid a high wage relatively to their team, and uh, you know if they don't have a use for them anymore, yeah, you know it can get ugly. It can be uh, yeah where the, there's this freeze out situation. And, uh, yeah, you know, you just kind of have this uh, this player just kind of eating up uh, wages. Uh, and so at this point, yeah, a million dollars is a drop in the bucket to Arthur Blake. Uh, let's be real. Mm -hmm. And uh, so at the end of the day, not a huge uh, issue uh, regarding, you know, kind of the checkbook for the owner. But... Uh, so yeah, I agree with you, man. Like, I think the best route is to just kind of cut bait and, uh, you know, let him find another team maybe. But, um, yeah, moving on from that, George Bello, he played for his new club, Armenia Bielefeld. Uh, it was a double substitution in the 71st minute. And, uh, yeah, he was able to, uh, yeah show a little bit of what he's capable of uh you know definitely always overlapping as a fullback and uh being somewhat available as well uh, and uh you know tracking back as well a little bit in this match so definitely a good little debut for bello and uh yeah the uh armenia uh club twitter is really pretty lit they uh you know, definitely gave a little bit of history of their club for the LA United fans, as well as uh, did a giveaway for Bello. I think they realized, yeah, like, LA United's massive. I mean, you know, I think uh, in that sense, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's just smart. It's just smart marketing. And, it uh, really is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, to a degree, it's like, you know, leverage the 
the American club that has over a million Twitter followers uh, for you know their uh, their team that's uh, maybe uh, realizing yeah we need to br- probably bring some more uh, you know different diverse fan base uh, into this uh, into this fandom so you know can't knock them it's so- pretty smart <laughs> but it's, uh, it's, an, it's an organic way to for them to build their brand and you know like i thought taking an ad out in the ajc was also a nice touch as well um yeah you know like just i was i was really impressed with that like recognition you know and and also i will say i did not necessarily expect bella to play right away um i thought he actually got a decent amount of time to show uh show his stuff i saw he got uh tackled into a flip sort of a welcome to bundesliga moment but um (laughs) Yeah, I'm excited. It's just I just uh, also find it a little funny uh, because there are certain uh, you know I don't like to give trolls too much attention, but there's certain people who were saying uh, you know Bello shouldn't uh, turn down the Belgian uh, <laughs> yeah. opportunity if he thinks he's better than that. He's kidding himself or whatever. It's like, dude, f off, man. You have no clue, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's that Bello uh... bet on himself. Uh huh. And exactly. he was right. Sorry. No, you're good. You're good, man. No, yeah, it's uh, that um, Circle, Circle Bruges team. I'm terrible with my Belgian, so uh, apologies for anyone that uh, needs to hear that. But uh, Or not really Belgian. It's probably like because uh, in Belgium, they speak French a lot as well. Uh, either way. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's basically, yeah, Bello, uh, I think, was better probably suited to play in Bundesliga in that, that way of, uh, you know, the competition is just better. The, um, you know, yeah, Armenia, Bielefeld isn't exactly a massive club, but uh, when you play against the likes of, uh, you know, Bayern Munich and Borussia Dortmund and Borussia Mönchengladbach, like, yeah, there's uh, some really, really, uh, you know, I think difficult competition that uh, I think will be good for his development. And so we'll be, uh, yeah, I think all keenly watching to see how he does develop. But uh, another guy that's obviously moved on as well, Ezekiel Barco to River Plate. Uh, It was announced. It was, of course, also uh, in the sense that uh, he will be joining LGP. They did a little, like, photo shoot uh, where all the new players uh, pretty much, uh, you know, were standing with Marcelo Gallardo. And it seems like, yeah, like Marcelo Gallardo pretty much is getting the war chest for River Plate. And where he pretty much has like three different 11s that he could play. Like if River Plate don't win everything in Argentina this season, uh, you know, they've failed. But uh, (laughs) they also, uh, so for Barco, um, they in Argentina, their sports center, also were highlighting a little bit of a nutmeg that he was able to pull off uh, while he was in possession when he did come on to play. So, uh, yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, quite tasty. Quite tasty of a, uh, of a nutmeg as well. But, uh, yeah, good to see Barco, uh, you know, in those River Plate colors. I uh, I don't know if uh, anyone is a Boca Juniors fan, but uh, I like that River Plate kit i mean it's just it looks good and you have a couple of guys that uh you know that are previous la united players now on the squad santiago sosa also from there it's just like you know it's almost a little sister club at this point where uh you know we're just gonna you know i think have a lot of um you know kind of deeper connections but uh anyway you have any thoughts on you know any of that I mean, that would be dope if we had, if we formed uh, some sort of relationship with River Plate. River Plate is one of the biggest clubs in the world, and I do mean the yeah. world. Like, you know, the their their home stadium is legendary. Uh, so, you know, with the fireworks and stuff, especially uh, during Copa Libertadores uh, that they like to do, um, and then of course the derby with uh, Boca Juniors is, is, as we've seen in recent history, can go over the top. Uh, yeah. But when it's uh, when it's at the right boil, you know, fantastic environment. So, um, and yeah, in terms of Barco, I mean, it, I I'm curious to see uh, what Barco does. I think under Gallardo in such a strong team, you know, and can he generate that European interest? Because I don't, I certainly don't think it's too late for him. 
-hmm. you know and i think that um you know i think the european teams are probably uh more keen to look outside of europe at this point uh just because I think the transfer market demands it, you know, it's, you know, the, the tax is there on like the known quantities. And so you kind of have to, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of go outside the box, like Bayern uh, signing out Alfonso Davies is a perfect example of that. Yeah. And so, yeah, yeah you know, definitely. I think that, yeah, I think Barca has an, has an opportunity. Yeah, it's definitely that. It's, uh, you know, he's still young enough, but he's got to show, uh, a lot of his capabilities otherwise yeah i mean you know it's still not a bad level for sure and playing for river play for however many years yeah still ain't too bad but uh yeah moving on from that uh really saddening and disheartening news uh christian carrillo uh he's a goalkeeper in la united's academy uh just 15 years old sadly passed away this past week and uh yeah definitely not something that uh you know the u15s his teammates or anyone his family anyone that knew him uh you know deserves to deal with but uh yeah definitely rest in peace to carrillo and uh yeah you know our deepest heartfelt wishes go uh to his family uh for the very best in them going forward. Uh, there's going to be a GoFundMe from uh, them, the, uh, you know, his, uh, his loved ones. And so we will link that in the description below. Please contribute if you can. But uh, yeah, definitely very, very sad there. And um, yeah, moving on from that. Uh, so it's Black History Month. And, yeah, there is a very dope scarf that uh, you can see behind Mark if you're uh, watching this pod. That, uh, ooh, that's pretty. That is yeah. pretty. <laughs> so, uh, then, yeah, uh, definitely. Kind of uh, I mean, I'm not, it's not even something that, like, uh, listen, I'm not going to, like, uh, I mean, this whole podcast obviously is a promotion for Atlanta United in, in a sense but I mean sure. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know this scarf is fire and uh, I don't know if mm -hmm. it's I mean you had to I think go into uh, the team store to get it but I think it's online now right. too but uh, yeah that is hot fire anyway yeah yeah uh, <laughs> It's well, the first scarf that I've I've yeah. never bought a scarf when it's come out. Like I've you know yeah. I, I I own a few scarves, but you know I'll right. get them on discount or I'll get yeah. like the uh, the supporters group scarf. But uh, in terms of team scarves, it's it's pretty like you said, man. I mean yeah. the 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 pattern, the color combination, mm -hmm. um, and it's you know I've wanted them to do something like this uh yeah. and i'm not the only one for a while now and mm -hmm. i i think it is uh it can be difficult to um sort of nail it in terms of getting the right tenor like you know it is mm -hmm. a scarf you know it is uh yeah. you know sort of like a soccer thing so uh like i think putting somebody's face on there for example maybe wouldn't necessarily be the move but yeah. um i think a callback to atlanta's black history is beautiful um and it, this just makes me, I think, more excited about the home opener, which is going to be at the end of February. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've kind of, I think, the team is already hinting that it's going to be uh, something along the lines of um, um, honoring Atlanta's Black history. You know, uh, in the one clip that they posted with the reference to Ebenezer Baptist Church, mm -hmm. uh, for example. So I'm just, I'm, I'm curious. So I'm definitely... Uh, you know, and the fact that we have a home opener on uh, opening weekend like feels like since first time since our first season that we've had that. So. Pretty much, it'll be, it'll yeah. Nice. It's kind of outrageous that uh, we've had to wait this long to uh, yeah get a yeah another opening week. Um, you know, kind of uh, home opener. It's uh yeah definitely gonna be welcomed. Uh, yeah, that roof better be closed. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, 
There yeah, will. Uh, I, I mean, that AC is gonna be cold enough, I think. But uh, yeah, they ain't gonna be. Uh, no need for that. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway, that does it for pretty much the entire show, except for the question of the day. And the question of the day is, well, Jurgen Dom, should we release him or should we find him a new club? Let us know in the comments below what you think we should do. So that's the show, guys. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe. And for Mark, I'm AJ. Thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.